It's Rap Critic Rewind, the part of the year where I flash back through the worst lyrics of 2023 to remind you how dumb they really were. So this year, an OG legendary rapper had beef with an OOG legendary rapper over shit that's honestly pretty fucking petty when you look into it, but, you know, knowing what I know about rap beefs by now, it's pretty much carrying on tradition at this point. Just to cut to the root of the issue, Melly Mel is an older rapper who, by nature of his time in the industry, has a founded paranoia concerning white takeovers of black genres. But just like all other phobias, it takes the seed of a partially founded fear and tumbles it into bigoted assumptions and beliefs where you overcorrect on issues in wrong-headed ways by looking at individuals instead of overarching supremacist systems. But because it was likely a mixture of that and his own ego over not being mentioned as much as a white rapper who's more recent, it dude jumped in his feelings long enough to release this embarrassing diss to him that inevitably fell flat on his face. And the silliest part was where he tried to do the getting real in your face bit by using Eminem's government name, but oh no, he got the name wrong. Sing a dash goodbye, cut before I put Matthew's likes out, I'm turning up his fucking Wi-Fi. So now he sounds just like the doddering old man that he clearly is overcompensating to avoid coming off as. And I've heard some people try to say, oh, maybe when he said that he meant the Matthew Mitchell character from the sequel song To Stand that Eminem did on the Marshall Mathers LP 2 10 years ago. But, like, listen to that explanation, man. Y you know that's giving him too much credit. <laughs> Okay, so we all know what the cheap, low-hanging fruit here would be. I, I could just make fun of the way it sounds, right? Just be like, what? He's wondering why his drink that typically has ice in it is cold? How silly! But nah, if we're respecting how we know the original song sounds, we know the original shape of the musical phrase is structured so that it elides over the words why and I that connects the full idea. So the tea going cold is like the scene setting, showing how much time has passed in between your thoughts. So then, what's the context flip supposed to be here? But doesn't lean usually have like ice in it or something, so isn't it already cold? So I guess you'd be saying that no time has passed. Like I'd wager he's meeting it in the same way as the original, as in a drink went stale after being out for too long, but a drink that you put ice in, it, it, it wouldn't be an issue if it was still cold, would it? It'd be more like, my drink's gone warm and I know why I, I nodded off like two hours ago. And I get it, they just used it for an aesthetic reference to the original song, but you know, you can still do that in a cohesive way. Like, I'll give you an imperfect example of it still being done well. You hear this song? California, rescue me. I've been so low, I've been weak. I don't like this at all. You can tell it's a cheap pop, just another sample from the Now That's What I Call Nostalgia Bait collection getting its burn on the radio. However, what they're saying actually does make sense in context. I mean, it's kind of exactly what the original song is about, so you know, why listen to this when you have the original, but at the very least, what they're functionally saying sounds like they're trying to build on the original idea. It's lazy, but I understand why they're using the sample. With the Ray Shrimmer track, the sample feels like it's just being shoehorned in without really making logical sense for why you'd say it that way. Like, like what's the clever twist here that justifies using it? Because even giving him the benefit of the doubt here, there's no alternative context that you can flip that doesn't bring us back to the square one imagery of a dude who seems weirdly confused that his drink that's usually already cold is still cold. Oh, oh wait, is there some more context here? Is he saying the lean's cold because it's in the fridge, it hasn't been drunk at all, because the party lifestyle just ain't cutting it anymore? So Aha, uh -huh, and you can see he's building on that idea because he later on confesses to no longer smoking. So oh, no, okay, he, he said he's still rolling up right after he said he wasn't, so I guess, I guess whatever. Okay, let's just break the fourth wall on this. You and I know this is all just unfocused lazy writing. They didn't have any direction or intention. It's just vibes-based first takes where they didn't really care to make any of the ideas connect from one lyric to the next. That said, look, it, it, this is the worst of lyrics list, so if I don't focus on inconsequential goof-ups like this, then I gotta do a serious one. And, oh man, it's probably the next one, isn't it? God damn it, these rappers just can't keep their dumb, uninformed opinions to themselves. Okay, let's just get it over with already. Oh wait, yeah, this one's just another lyrical fuck up that rappers make because they think no one's paying attention. <laughs> All right, let's go then. Called your bluff, better cite the source. Fame ain't something that I need no more. Oh yeah, that's right. She's gotten what she needs out of the game, so you can have it back. She couldn't care less. Bitch, I said what. 
what I said. I'd rather be famous instead. Oh, right. Except for the hook where, where, where she explicitly says she does want to be famous. And it's not like singers can't express ambivalent feelings towards fame if it's intentionally framed for you to feel the pull of extremes, right? Like, oh, here's one factor that I like, but here's another factor that I don't. But here, she doesn't frame it well or flesh out the feelings in relation to each other. So the hook and that one lyric are just so ideologically contrasting, it, it doesn't seem like they're in the same song. This line is explicitly saying, I could not give a shit about being well known, right before she comes back to the hook where she says, I'd rather be famous instead. That's pretty explicitly saying, I very much enjoy being well known and would like to continue doing so. And look, I, I said this one wasn't going to get deep, but I'm sorry. I, I can't help but notice how these lines where she's giving us these weird contrasting feelings towards fame are also paralleling this weird saga of Doja Cat's relationship with fame and how things played out this year. And let me explain, because, you know, I, I, I try as a person to just care about the music and not focus on the fame side of it and what they're doing personally. But th then you see a tweet about her showing feet in racist chat rooms and it's like, okay, well, I gotta know if that's true or not. But with that initial situation, it was more like, oh, we caught you off guard, big self-hating black person trying to get chubby with rando red pillars by being even more edgy with them. But because you heard that first phrase, it's like, oh, what, 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 is she some card-carrying clan member? Oh, then you get the specifics of the story, and it's like, oh, okay, well, that's certainly embarrassing, but, you know, I, I, I'm not a personal friend, so if the bops are good, then who cares? Then, right before the newest album drops, there was this weird kerfuffle where a bunch of fans were apparently getting up in arms because they said they loved her on a fan page, but she wouldn't say it back to them, so it felt like things were tipping in a way that you couldn't help but be on her side. Like, who do these fans think they are? Now, someone can be cool, but, you know, if they don't want to, they don't have to. So my thinking is, hey, if you're gonna be this pushy, find someone else who gives into that parasocial audience capture bullshit. As a matter of fact, that album just dropped, and I think I will throw my weight in on Doja's side, because the music is poppin'. Oh, then she posted a pic of a Nazi with a gun on her shirt. And look, I tried to give the benefit of the doubt of this guy, Sam Hyde, like, oh, is this maybe like a comedian who's a little edgier than most people's taste, but he means nothing by it, but, uh, no, this guy's like whole hog white supremacist. Like the, I don't hate black people, I just think whites should keep their culture protected so their genes don't get diluted by the swarty hordes of the, yeah, and it's like, okay, buddy. And look, being exposed as secretly into race play fetish shit because of the weird hangups you're privately dealing with, you know, that's one thing. Posting a public picture to Instagram of yourself wearing the t-shirt of a douche nozzle who notoriously got their Adult Swim show cancelled because it was just so obvious how much their comedy appealed to neo-Nazi chuds? That, you have to be doing on purpose. So that brings me back to my point. Does she want the fame and these are her cynical attempts to keep people talking? Or is this a rejecting your audience move to get people to leave her be and stop checking for her music? I mean, my money is on her really not wanting this fame because I, I don't wager neo-Nazi imagery typically goes over well with the black female hip hop demo. Although what's even more confusing is the title caption she put over it. Dumb Cumpster? Wh why would you post such a weird sexual phrasing on top of that picture? Oh, oh wait, I don't. I think I see what's happening here. Did did you accidentally post your race play fetish stuff to the wrong website or something? Like, whoops, you meant to post your degradation photo to your Kinkstergram account, but Alexa heard it as Instagram, oh no. I mean, barring that, if you're gonna wear a shirt with this type of guy on it, you either don't know who he is, in which case you're a dumbass, or you do know who he is and you're fine with it, in which case you're a shit heel. And you know, it's a sad predicament where the positive explanation is that she's just a fucking clueless idiot. So this is Jack Harlow sticking it to the critics joint, a bucket against accusations of him blowing up solely because he's white. It can't be the tone of my voice, it can't be the thought I put in every choice, it can't be the absence of any facade, it can't be the worldwide hometown pride. But it, it, it's so awkward when he gets to the switch up. So I guess it must be my skin, I can't think of any other reason I win, I can't think of an explanation. And it's like, okay dude, just to level with him, I, I get what he's trying to say here. Like, no, he didn't push some white supremacy button to get him where he is, he did put in work. But to think that your whiteness has absolutely nothing to do with it, that's just being goddamn delusional. Let's not sit here and act like it's not white kids that are the larger buying audience for mainstream hip-hop in America. That when they see a face that looks like theirs that can actually rap a bit, of course that's gonna appeal to them. But the ego gets in the way, right? Because if you admit you got any lucky breaks, well then you look like you didn't earn it, right? But if you're completely denying any advantages you have, well you end up sounding like the white dude in that infamous webcomic. You know, the one where the two people are working really hard, and one of them's a Latina woman, but because one person happened to have access to a few advantages, they get a little further in life in a way they just couldn't have been able to in the same way without the resources they had access to. 
And the thing is, he's actually pretty good at pointing this stuff out when he's observing other people, like in his Common Ground song. The festivals are filled with Larry Bird jerseys, college students in a hurry to jump to a four count and say the N word. Condescending suburban kids growing up to be rap journalists writing urban myths about who they think is the best urban kid and who the worst is and who's authentic. However, the framing of it is what exposes the issue with his perspective. In Common Ground, he's noticing what he sees as obvious as a white dude with the different ways some white guys perpetuate the passive background radiation of white supremacy. But when it comes to himself and his achievements personally, what, those privileges couldn't exist? Cause, cause if they did, then that means maybe I didn't deserve it, right? That's the insecurity that's at the heart of these lines. It has to be solely the fact that I work so hard, cause if it's in any way attributable to my skin, then, then that means I'm benefiting from a privilege that I don't deserve. But here's the thing, man. It was a great little girl in a commercial that once said, like, it's both, dude, and I know it's a blow to the ego to admit that you in any way benefit because in hip-hop it kind of starts like a proving ground amongst other rappers that are still mostly black in the underground, but once you hit mainstream and other, the crowds you have access to in the general American mainstream demographic is gonna be a little lighter. Like, no doubt, Eminem made headway by being white, but still, if he didn't have the cleverness behind the zany raps to back it up, there are plenty of other rappers that could have taken his place. Now, his output in the past decade has been kind of faulty, so personally I think his claim at the top five is in jeopardy, but hey, maybe the lesson is focus on quality control and you won't need to wonder if your placement in hip-hop is due to the color of your skin. However, Jackie Boy might not have to worry about staking claims to greatness at all if this next song is an indication. Oh yeah, that's right, I had to do a double adder on this one, cause like, th this is the very first thing he says on the song. And I, 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 maybe you can help me connect the dots here. Like, your best friend's problem was that he just fought cancer and got his life back from the jaws of death. And your deal is, you can't take the hint that an ex-girlfriend doesn't want to answer your calls? And what's crazy is, this is the hook of the song. Is he malfunctioning or something? What the fuck is happening right now? She know I'm a romancer. Yeah, I get the feeling she wouldn't agree with that sentiment. You know I make you laugh like no one else, you love my banter. Yeah, someone not answering your calls is a pretty direct sign they don't enjoy your conversation. And is this supposed to be the example of your undeniably witty repartee? I call my ex no answer, as in that's my nickname for her, cause when I call no answer. Well, it can't be his white skin that made him say that dumb shit, right? Oh, how do you like that for your racial political commentary? <laughs> Tune in next time for part two of the list, where it will definitely get no more serious than this. But remember, patrons get access to part two first, as well as other fun stuff I got going on over there like podcasts, music, and joining the Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. So get with it, act like you want it, and I'll catch you on the other side. Peace.